welcome once again to Commander by Danon. Today's video was brought to us by longtime Patreon supporter Roxy. Huge thanks to Roxy and the rest of my Patreon supporters. Roxy reached out asking for a deck led by Ariette the Beguiler, and I was more than happy to build that for her. Also, and I know it's annoying to keep hearing this, but statistically, if I don't ask you to like and subscribe, the video gets fewer subscribers. Ariette the Beguiler is a 4-mana 4-4 legendary human warlock with lifelink. She makes it so that any time we attach an aura to a non-land permanent an opponent controls, we gain control of that permanent. The restriction being that the aura used to capture that non-land permanent must have a mana value greater than or equal to that permanent's mana value. Quick reminder, X is equal to zero at all times outside of when the spell is actually on the stack. Now, there are auras that enchant lands in the game, but unfortunately, Ariette doesn't allow us to steal our opponent's lands. Too bad. But we can steal any other non-land permanent. But before we get to our deck list, a quick word from our sponsor, Ultimate Guard. Ultimate Guard is always innovating, and recently they've unveiled their new Druidic Secrets boulders. Turn your deck box into a mystical place. These gorgeous boulders come in a variety of colors and patterns, like this olive-colored one celebrating the trees. Unleash your inner dryad to become one with nature and pick up one yourself at your local game store. Or order one on Amazon, link down below. In order to build a functional commander deck, you need lots of different pieces, which is why I try to rely on my handy dandy checklist. 50 mana sources, usually split between 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp, 10 pieces of card advantage, eight to 10 pieces of spot removal, two to three board wipes, two pieces of graveyard hate, and one sudden I win card. Oh, one more quick announcement before we get started. I'm going to be streaming on Musings by Dane and as well as Twitch. It'll mostly be Final Fantasy XIV, but you're more than welcome to pop in and talk about manga. Honestly, about half my streams are spent talking about manga, anime, or commander. Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Flooded Strand, Polluted Delta, Marsh Flats, Arid Mesa, Scalding Tarn, Verdant Catacombs, Rafine's Tower, Hallowed Fountain, Watery Grave, Godless Shrine, Sea of Clouds, Morphic Pool, Vault of Champions, Deserted Beach, Shipwreck Marsh, Shattered Sanctum, Glacial Fortress, Drowned Catacomb, Isolated Chapel, Meticulous Archive, Undercity Sewers, Shadowy Backstreet, Bajuka Bog, Four Plains, Four Islands, and Three Swamps make up the land base for our deck. As a quick reminder, fetch lands do not have a color identity. I know that color identity is very confusing, but just because the word mountain is on a card does not mean it has a red color identity. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to play white creatures with mountain walk in a mono white deck. Killian Ink Duelist, Starfield Mystic, Danitha Capuchin Paragon, Smothering Tithe, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Talisman of Progress, Talisman of Dominance, Talisman of Hierarchy, Azorius Signet, Demir Signet, Orzov Signet, Thrawn Dynamo, and Decanter of Endless Water help us to ramp out and stay ahead of the curve. Ramp is important in this deck as we need to be casting bigger auras in order to steal our opponent's stuff. Insatiable Avarice, Srom Senior Edificer, Sage's Reverie, Mesa Enchantress, Core Spirit Dancer, Retether, Open the Armory, Resurgent Belief, Open the Vaults, Idyllic Tutor, and Ristic Study help us to dig through our deck or recast our spent auras. Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile, Generous Gift, Stroke of Midnight, 
Fracture, Counterspell, Dovin's Veto, Arcane Denial, Negate, Teferi's Protection, and Commit Memory help us to keep our opponents in line. A balance of spot removal and counter magic to help keep our opponents on their toes. Winds of Wrath, Cyclonic Rift, and Dam help us to reset the board when needed. Eldrazi Conscription, Relic Bind, Celestial Mantle, Aerial Modification, Astral Wingspan, Drake Umbra, Freed from the Real, Followed Footsteps, Fool's Demise, Gift of Doom, Mammoth Umbra, Knightly Valor, Mantle of the Ancients, Octopus Umbra, Righteous Authority, Soaring Hope, Angelic Destiny, Spectral Ward, All the Glitters, and Indestructibility make up the core of our deck, and how we plan on taking what is rightfully ours. Or not so rightfully, depending on your point of view. Supporting our plan, we've also got Area of the Charmed Apple, Asinine Antics, Swiftfoot Boots, and Lightning Greaves. Now that we have our deck list, let's compare it to our checklist. 50 mana sources split between 36 lands and 14 pieces of ramp. Right on target. 11 pieces of card advantage. 11 pieces of interaction. 3 board wipes. 2 pieces of graveyard hate in Commit Memory and Bajuka Bog. 1 sudden I win card in Asinine Antics. Did I include this card simply so I could say Asinine a bunch of times? No comment. Asinine Antics puts a roll token on each creature our opponents control. A roll token is a colorless enchantment aura, which means we gain control of all of our opponent's creatures, so long as they have no mana value. Remember what I said about X spells having zero mana value earlier. Most tokens also have zero mana value. Not all, but most. I mean, sure, we may turn them all into one ones instead of what they were before, but this is hilarious. In all seriousness, our deck can pivot between a Voltron deck where we pump Ariette the Beguiler to smash people in the face, winning via commander damage, or we sit back and steal everyone else's creatures, or their commanders. Most people are running lower mana value commanders these days, other than dragons and dinosaurs, of course. But even Eldrazi Conscription can steal a Gishath, Sun's Avatar, or a Morophon. And I love the idea of casting Celestial Mantle and stealing my wife's Lathless. <sighs> Remember, gentle viewer, commander damage is still commander damage, regardless of who's in control of the commander when it hits someone. Now, despite the point of this deck using our auras to steal other permanents and whatnot, our deck doesn't want to have a ton of auras in our opening hand. Rather, we'd rather ramp as quickly as possible. Our curve is rather high, so having about three lands and two pieces of ramp, as well as either some interaction or card advantage in our opening hand, would be perfect. The first couple turns will be spent ramping and drawing cards, then we can finally cast our commander and start stealing stuff. But we'll want to have some interaction to help keep Ariette safe. Counterspells or boots of some kind would be ideal, but not necessary. After all, we keep what we steal so long as our commander is still on the battlefield after Ariette resolves. And even after a board wipe, if our other auras all get sent to the graveyard, we can bring them all back with an open the vaults or a retether. Overall, I'm really happy with how this deck came together. Are you building an Ariette the Beguiler deck? What's your secret deck deck? Leave a comment below. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, she can be reached at cutestuff.edits at gmail.com. Link is down below. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Danan. You can have a video made or just ask for help building or tuning a deck list. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Waffles, Jiraiya, Danny, Muffins, Marcus, Squishy, Brett, Roxy, Sean, Mark, Borgi, Naswin, Pedro, Midge, Alex, Alex, Julio, Valeri, Conga, RJ, Aaron, Chris, Robert, Joel, Brock, Michael, Skinwalker, Sidewinder, Austin, and William. You guys are awesome. I post new Commander Deck videos every weekday, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Commander by Danan.